the photograph under consideration today. It's a gelatin silver print made by Milwaukee-based artist Eugene von Brunchenhain. The photograph is untitled, though we can see from the descriptor, it's Marie with floral halter top, flower and hair, hibiscus background. It's from the 1940s. And it's a very small work. It's about three and a half by two and a half inches. And it comes from the collection of Victor F. Keen. So we have a young woman. She's seated on her knees. She's looking off to us, the viewers left. Notice the effects of this dramatic light on her, the way they light up her face and the way they illuminate her body and cast shadows across her. We have heard from the title that the background is hibiscus, so please take a moment and look, look at this background, this very deliberate choice of what uh, this pair has made to position her in front of. We can see how she's sort of set up between these, these two columns of uh, flowers and to me, it sort of calls attention to this triangular kind of form that she is, and it even sort of extends upward and kind of elongates uh, her own figure. We're right there with her uh, in this moment. Uh, she almost kind of emerges and becomes part of the background. It's sort of all consuming. Here's a wonderful close up of, of our subject, Marie. And, you know, we can think this is no casual photograph. It's been very deliberately orchestrated down to the, uh, the flowers in her hair and sort of the way that uh, she's taken the time to pull herself together for this photograph, kind of to, to fix her hair. And I like this particular detail as well because it's very evident that it is a photograph. You can see all of the sort of... The, the quality of the photo and how it was developed, the background, the sort of the marks on the, uh, the paper. So we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about what we know about her, Marie. She was the subject of a recent essay by Karen Patterson in the EVB Mythologies catalog from the John Michael Kohler Art Center, which explored uh, many aspects of his work, including um, his photographs and Marie and sort of who she is. We know that her actual name was Evelyn, Eveline Teresa Kalka, born August 1st, 1920 in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, and she died in suburban Milwaukee in around 1989. She met EVB at the Wisconsin State Fair in 1939, and the two married about three years later, and she became known as Marie after one of his uh, beloved aunts. So that's not her name of origin, but sort of the name, uh, her, her inspired name. Uh, in 1983, EVB's work was really brought to more public attention. So it wasn't until that time that really a public uh, even began to be familiar with his work. But who was he, this, um, this person who photographed uh, Marie? And there's an interesting plaque inside of his home that says, Eugene von Brinchenhain, freelance artist, poet and sculptor, innovator, arrow maker and plant man, bone artifacts constructor, photographer and architect, philosopher. And so that clearly uh, tells us how he sort of thought about um, himself and his many uh, varied interests. So he was also from Wisconsin, like Marie. He was born in 1910 in Marionette. He died in 1983. He was not trained as an artist or a photographer. In fact, he worked as a florist and as a commercial baker until the late 1950s. And uh, in the 1940s, he began making photographs of his wife. And so what you see here, kind of around 1950, he began also turning his attention to painting. He painted for some years, then took sort of a long break with painting and made ceramic works. He made bone tower constructions, and then he returned to, the paint, to painting again in 1977 and created many tower paintings. Um, there are some 
clues to different types of inspiration that EVB had. This image that you see at the, uh, the top are actually some scrapbooks from EVB's home. And uh, they include some uh, cutouts from Men's Quarterly Magazine from the 1950s. So actually a little bit, uh, this particular image anyway, is a little bit later than the photographs that we're seeing. At the time when we think of the 1940s, we can think about coming out of the war, we can think about it being the era of the pinup girl. And so on the top left, it's just an example of a, a 1940s uh, pinup calendar. To the uh, top right, we have a 1950s James Manfield image, also an, uh, in front of a Christmas tree. And I thought that was just interesting uh, to think about in terms of what Intuit has in our collection. And also uh, there, there actually is a tradition of sort of the holiday pinup as well. We're back to our, our subject, Marie. And so I'm interested to hear sort of as viewers how, what your comments are about, about this work and about sort of what you've observed or what's been kind of cropping up to your mind as you uh, think about this, this particular photograph. I noticed when looking at this image again, was that there is a certain softness to the photograph that I hadn't uh, noticed quite as much uh, before. I think that perhaps the way that he's lighting and of course just this very sort of serene confidence, I think that, that I see and uh, perhaps others may interpret it differently, but I was struck very much by this sort of softness when you all look at this photograph, I know it's, it is in black and white, is do you see color or do you, d how does it being in black and white, what role or does that play a role as you're sort of looking at the work? This sort of expression of vulnerability and sereneness that is difficult to imagine in a relationship where there wouldn't have been trust, but it's just so fascinating to sort of think about uh, how our relationships are, or how their relationship, I guess, as a, an example, is sort of the witness we're sort of bearing to it, whatever it was that we'll never, of course, know because you can never get inside of any uh, marriage or working relationship fully, I guess. And a beautiful image, I think, for contemplation.